Okay. The howitzer knee pads are a favorite of many cavers. They were originally designed and manufactured by Howie Cobb, and the howitzer name is both a reference to their designer and the fact that they have somewhat bulletproof durability. Howie stopped making these a few years ago and sold his inventory to OnRope One, who are still making them today. They are a short style knee pad that covers the knee but not the shin, and are 10 inches long and 6 inches wide. The front is made of three panels of 1680 denier ballistic nylon, and the back panel is a soft felt. They use a half inch thick neoprene foam pad, and the top has a Velcro closure so that pads can be replaced, or thicker pads can be added. They have two straps that are sewn on one end, and have a button buckle attachment that allows some rotation of the strap. Both straps are one and a half inches wide, with the lower one being static webbing, and the upper one being elastic. They only come in one size, but the straps are continuously adjustable and long enough for almost any caver without being too long. The three panel design allows the pads to have some curvature to better fit the shape of the knee, but this also leaves two seams on the front of the pad that are potential weak spots. I've been using these pads for more than 10 years now, and with heavy use I go through a pair about once a year. A few of these pairs have had failures at the seams, but most of them first develop holes in the softer and less durable backing material or the edges start to fray. Adding aqua seal or shoe goo to the seams on the front panel and along the edges may give you longer life, but the overall durability has been excellent when compared to other knee pads. The strap design on the howitzers is one of my favorites of any knee pad. It's simple and reasonably effective. The static webbing below the knee doesn't stretch, and if tightened properly keeps the pads from slipping down. The area of the leg just below the knee doesn't expand when the knee is flexed, so this webbing strap isn't too uncomfortable. The area of the leg above the knee does expand when the knee is flexed, and since this strap is elastic, it conforms to those changing dimensions. The straps feed through an adjustable buckle and do a reasonably good job of holding their adjustment. I have sewn the straps together before though, after adjusting, to prevent the possibility of them getting loose. The button attachment system looks like it might be a weak point, but after owning about 10 pairs, I've never had a failure of the button or buckle. They're very quick to take on and off without changing the strap length adjustment and are generally worn over the top of tights, pants, or oversuits. And because there's no Velcro, they work really well in muddy conditions. The pads have a right and left side, but it's up to personal preference whether to have the button closure on the inside or outside of the knee. I wear mine with the closure on the outside, but the buckles will take less abuse if oriented to the inside. I found the neoprene foam to be very resilient and will last a long time in very abusive conditions without losing much thickness or developing flat spots. I've added a second layer of half inch foam to one pair I own for use in especially crawly caves like wind and jewel. But for most caving, the standard single layer foam is a good balance between low bulk and occasional crawling comfort. In most cases, the backing panel wears out before the foam does, but the foam can be easily replaced if needed. Extra foam can also be ordered from OnRope One. These knee pads do a good job of staying in place, are reasonably comfortable to wear and crawl on, durable and economically priced at $30. I strongly recommend them. For an overview and comparison of various knee pad options for caving, check out the caving gear section of my website at DerekBristol.com.